nation's civil war ends in 1865. Two years later, Nebraska becomes the 37th state. Homesteaders stream into the region to claim free government land. Settlers encroach into areas native peoples roam at will. Across the plains, government forts exist to deal with conflicts between natives and immigrants. In the Platte River Valley, Fort Kearney provides frontier protection for 23 years. But by 1871, the Indian Wars shift further west and north, and Fort Kearney is abandoned. However, the North Loop River Valley is still sparsely populated. In Nebraska's Sandhills, the occasional incident with natives makes homesteading uncomfortable. A cow-stealing episode results in a skirmish along Pebble Creek. A young trapper, Marion Littlefield, dies of a gunshot wound. His death lends credibility to settler petitions, and Congress soon approves $50,000 for a military presence. Fort Hartsuff was established not only to protect our settlers who were coming into the area in the early 1870s, but also protect the Pawnee Indians from the more nomadic and somewhat more warlike Lakota Sioux. The fort is named after a Civil War officer. As was traditional, a new post being built was named after a recently deceased officer. A, a general named George Lucas Hartsuff died of, well, natural causes, yet some that were probably due to his wounds during the Civil War and during the Indian Wars in Florida. As far as I know, he never went west of the Missouri River. Fort Hartsuff sits near the waters of the North Loop River. The Calamus River also flows through the region. But timber is not immediately abundant, so Fort Hartsuff does not resemble the popular conception of a fort. Fort Hartsuff is entirely built of lime concrete because wood was scarce, virtually unavailable in this area uh, due to the periodic prairie fires sweeping away the trees. So we had plenty of gravel and we had plenty of lime and a lot of water and uh, the buildings stand as they stood. Few disturbances require the soldiers to leave their revelries. One major encounter does occur in April of 1876, just a few miles northwest of present day Burwell. A small band of Indians was apparently guilty of taking someone's turkeys, or a few of them at least, and, and having a feast with them. One of their, the settlers, were sent back to the fort to get help from the soldiers. The soldiers sent out about an 11-man detachment. The settlers had surrounded the Indians in a blowout. Well, they, they had desultory fire between them, and then when the soldiers got there, there was a more intense effort to rout these Indians out or to kill them or capture them. And during this course of action, uh, we lost one of our soldiers, uh, Sergeant Dougherty, was, was killed. And one of the Indians apparently was either killed or severely wounded. But more interestingly, three Congressional Medals of Honor were awarded as a result of this little action. Indian problems quickly dwindle as more settlers arrive. The soldiers spend more time helping authorities pursue horse thieves, murderers, and train robbers. One very good example was that in which uh, Doc Middleton was captured. Doc Middleton was one of our most famous outlaws here in Nebraska. Turned out to be a real good guy after he spent his time in the penitentiary, but his capture probably wouldn't have taken place had not three members of our military unit here at Fort Hartsup accompanied the detectives and civilian law enforcement people. The soldiers escort travelers to Deadwood, South Dakota, and pioneer a new trail from Grand Island to the Black Hills gold fields. However, adventure is not typical of the soldier's day-to-day -day life. It is frequently an existence of duty fatigue and boredom. 
the army lost a lot of people to desertion. We didn't have a great problem here, but we had our share. Despite some humdrum days, Fort Hartsuff is regarded as a station of choice assignment. It was pleasant because the buildings were modern, warm in winter, cool in summer. We had a good hospital. We had a good set of laundress quarters. Our favorite facilities here was our post bakery. By law, each man in the United States Army was allocated one pound of bread per day. A lot of times he'd have enough bread for the soldiers and have uh, uh, bread left over. And then what he would do would go ahead and sell that leftover bread maybe to the officers' wives, uh, maybe to the settlers in the area. And that money went into what was called the post fund. And then that's what the soldiers could use to buy uh, old reading material, monographed china, uh, baseball equipment, and things like that so they could have recreation. Periodically, festive atmospheres arise. The fort is a gathering place for settlers and soldiers to dance and enjoy holiday celebrations. Soldiers swim the river, fish and hunt, play vintage baseball. Sometimes high spirits are lifted further by spirits, of the bottled variety. There was a little village nearby named Calamus where liquor was available. Uh, bad things would happen and we occasionally had men incarcerated in our guardhouse. One of our soldiers here, uh, Private Montgomery, uh, indulged in a little too much of the social activities. His cause of death is listed as alcohol poisoning but in reality, what happened was he had drank too much, got drunk, and fell down and hung himself in the picket fence. Only two other soldiers die while at Fort Hartsuff. Dougherty falls in that battle of the blowout, and Private Henry Rogers succumbs to typhoid fever. The men originally rest in a nearby cemetery with settlers of the valley. As was traditional, when any fort is abandoned, even today, the military bodies are removed and taken to the nearest national cemetery. Our nearest national cemetery is, is Fort McPherson, the only one in Nebraska, as a matter of fact. Fort Hartsuff is never heavily garrisoned, generally manned by one infantry company of about 55 soldiers. In addition to the military regiment, the men, their wives, and other women work at various jobs. Life around the fort's parade ground lasts but seven years. Local settlements grow to provide strong area government. So Fort Niobrara is established further north in the state. Fort Hartsuff serves its purpose and shuts down in 1881. The federal government's policy of forcing Indians onto reservations worked very well. The reservations were generally at least 125 miles away from Fort Hartsuff, so we were kind of out of play by the early 1880s. The Union Pacific Railroad buys the fort from the government, but never runs track through the area. The property is soon sold to local interests. The landscape is farmed. The commanding officer's house becomes a grain storage bin. Time and neglect nibble at the buildings, but due to the rocky construction material, remnants survive. There were elements of all nine original buildings still standing. We had a couple of owners bought the place about 1939, and they were very interested in its preservation. And they were generous enough to give the site of Fort Hartsuff and the buildings to the state of Nebraska and is now an historical park. Years of research and restoration resurrect the old post, Periodically, living history volunteers walk in the steps of our predecessors and echo their lives. Holiday weekends and most Sundays during the summer we have as many soldiers as possible, women in period attire, and kids. The preserve station makes it easy to time travel and imagine the activities, events, and affairs of an 1870s day at Fort Hartsuff, a Sandhills stronghold.